Well, uh, the project goes back many years. I mean, the whole business of photographing the war graves, it all goes back to my interest in black and white photography. And uh, that started in my third and last term up at Cambridge in um, 1951, when I said to myself, by God, I must photograph this in some way. And that led to my buying my first little camera, which was a 35mm Zeiss Iconta, which I've still got, lovely, with hidden bellows and so simple and no electronics at all. So I had to learn to judge the light and everything. But And the real takeoff was when in... September, October uh, 1951, I went to the, my medical school in London, St Mary's, and there was a chap in my year who taught me how to use an enlarger. And in the anatomy department was the Rolls-Royce, a Lights Focomat 2C, which actually would take 35 millimeter as well as two and a quarter square. And uh, well, that's when it really started. That's when photography really took off, when I learned to compose and so on in the darkroom. And there it went. Composing in the darkroom, as you know, enlarging and cropping and how dark to print and what contrast to print and so on, the whole thing. But you've got to start with a decent negative and people forget that. And then later on, I um, graduated to a Leica M2, which I've still got. All mechanical camera, completely mechanical. So you had to judge everything. You had to work everything out. You had to work out the light, work out the view, everything. I mean, that's what all the masters had to do. I had a, a method, um, but then I would later use a light meter, a Western Master 3, which I've still got. And what's interesting, no battery, all dependent upon the extraordinary capacity of a photoelectric cell. Yes, later, when I got the M6, that had metering in, built in. But you still had to do everything. You had to compose. I think it must have been in about 1960, uh, perhaps a bit later, 62, 63. I was in France with my parents, and I think it was in the winter, when I suddenly saw these wonderful cemeteries. Perfect subject for black and white. Perfect. Especially in the winter with the bare trees and so on and so forth. And that's really when I, it, it, it grabs me. Later on, I had a very good friend, John Jenkins, who died quite young. And we used to go off walking the cemeteries, also eating and drinking in France. And most of these journeys, in fact virtually all of them, John was with me. I got to know people in the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, and I knew two of the DGs, one of them very well. Arthur Hockaday. Uh, his brother was a physician in Oxford, whom I'd known for many years. And that was a great help, of course. But I used to go to things at the commission, and I met a lot of people. And John and I used to go on some of the commission's outings, field days, when they would see how the work went on in the cemeteries and so on and so forth. One of the most important things, as far as I was concerned with my mate John Jenkins, it was wonderful to be there in silence, just to stand and think and absorb. So I've never actually been on any guided tours. I didn't fancy the idea. I wanted to be alone, thinking of the people, which I would find very difficult in a crowd. As well as the cemeteries, it was the literature, the contemporaneous literature, and especially the prose literature that was so attractive, so full of meaning. And, I mean, you have to remember that in the Great War, the prose literature was the only real way of communicating and of recording, which is why the prose literature is so powerful, I think. But... I have to stress that my photography, as you can see, I was more concerned to get a good photograph rather than necessarily to record things. So it all really starts with black and white photography. And I, have, I find that colour can be very disconcerting. 
I hope when it comes to this Remembrance Sunday, they don't make too much pomp of it. I get a bit tedious, a bit fed up with the great, with the military parade side of it. But I don't think that's what it's about. Particularly this one. Um, all the stuff about Amiens, that was fine, that was all right, but there was too much soldiery for me. In the fourth edition of the book, I wrote a chapter called The Aftermath, very cynical, meant to be cynical, terrible. If you were to add an afterword to that, covering the years... Well, maybe, but I'm not into. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not adding anything more. Done. Done. <laughs>